uh, ask your questions. Thank you. So thank you very much, and thank you very much uh, for your presence here. Um, we had till the last moment a lot of very interesting meetings here in uh, Budapest and the last one here in the EPLO. May I thank um, in the first place uh, the uh, European Parliament's uh, civil servants very much for the support and for the help to the delegation. First of all, let me recall the reasons why we are undertaking this fact-finding mission to Budapest. The Budgetary Control Committee is responsible for the conditionality mechanism for the protection of the financial interests of the Union and the sole committee being responsible um, uh, uh, one moment of it, for the sole committee being responsible for the democratic scrutiny of the spending of EU funds. There were some people asking why Hungary? Hungary is the first country where the EU triggered the conditionality mechanism for the protection of the financial interests of the European Union. As we all know, the triggering resulted in the decision of the member states to suspend 55% of funds under three cohesion programs for 2021 to 27. The negotiations with the Commission on the implementation of the 17 remedial measures to unfreeze those funds are ongoing. In our responsibility as discharge authority, we also assess the ongoing process for the implementation of the 27 super milestones for Hungary to unblock payments under the recovery and resilience facility. Under the RRF, Hungary has not yet received any payment pending the implementation of the underlying milestones and targets. We have spent three days of intense and very interesting meetings with different stakeholders responsible for the management, implementation and control of the EU funds. Representatives of the government, audit and tax bodies, members of the opposition, local and regional authorities, businesses, civil society, and journalists. The delegation of the Cont Committee and all counterparts share the same view. EU funds represent a very big opportunity for the development of Hungary, for the prosperity of Hungarian citizens. However, our core concern is how the money can reach Hungarian citizens businesses and regions in a transparent, in a fair and in an impartial way. How to ensure that all regions, citizens and businesses have equal access to EU funds without any discrimination and without any political bias. Let me be clear from the start, the European Parliament and the Cont Committee want funds to reach citizens and companies in Hungary. But in order for that to happen, adequate control systems and fair distribution procedures of EU funds must be ensured. Upon concluding our mission, I can say our mission gave valuable on-the-spot information to the Parliament, the Commission, as well as the European Court of Auditors. First, we noticed several positive developments, such as the setup of the new Integrity Authority, we recognize the reforms increasing cooperation between the National Tax and Customs Administration and the EU Anti-Fraud Office, OLAF, the strengthening of the National Judiciary Council. For the Parliament, the independence of the judiciary system is of major importance. This is why we will continue to closely monitor the progress of the implementation of the related reforms. But we have identified certain shortcomings. During our mission, our concerns on the effectiveness of the State Audit Office to adequately audit the planning, implementation and control of EU funds um, and the functioning of the national authorities related to it were confirmed. Our questions to the State Audit Authority concerning misuse, manipulation of tenders, reliability of budget accounts, 
reporting of fraud cases to prosecution remained unanswered. Finding from the European Court of Auditors, OLAF and the European Commission provided the con committee a show that there are, they show that there are persisting problems in the implementation of the EU funds. One example only. For the 2014 to the 2020 period, 29 audits were carried out, which imposed altogether an estimated um, 1.48 billion euro, approximately 560 billion forints, of financial corrections. It was astonishing for us that the State Audit Office did not mention any of these weaknesses. As the recovery fund is concerned, the Hungarian State Audit Office offered no explanation on how they will follow and assess the use of these funds. Second issue, free market economy. The CONT delegation also received information about issues related to public procurement. Civil society, the business community and local and regional authorities shared concerns about concentrations of public procurement awards in the hands of certain companies and persons close to the current government. Proper implementation of public procurement and fair competition rules are key for lifting the block on cohesion funds as well as the RIF funds. One of the major concerns raised by the business community are the distorting, are distorting measures of the government in the field of competition, taxation and EU's internal market rules. Discriminatory measures such as arbitrary overnight change of laws, undue and unjustified measures under the pretext of state of emergency, including unfair special taxes or fees, as well as damaging and distorting price caps to sectors such as retail, construction and transport sectors. We were also informed about intimidating actions such as visits by the secret police at companies' offices or at unjustified extremely frequent inspections aimed at imposing arbitrary penalties and unjustified obligations to pave the way for a takeover. Let me remind you that Hungary is a member of the EU single market and in the single market there can be no discrimination of companies they all must have the same right and the same obligations. Then um, the powers of the National Assembly. In our meetings with representatives of the Hungarian Parliament and civil society, we were informed about flaws in the decision-making process, such as reduced time for public consultations, overnight decrees and changes to the budget. One example only, in 2022 the budget was modified 95 times without involvement of Parliament in the decision-making process. The need for a democratic oversight by the Parliament is essential for the functioning of rule of law and democracy and for proper checks and balances. Further issue, co-governance. Finally, local and regional authorities raised concerns about their insufficient involvement in the design of the National Recovery and Resilience Plan and the insufficient recognition of their specific needs. I want to clearly underline that for the European Parliament and the CONT Committee, the adequate involvement of local and regional authorities in the design and implementation of the national recovery plans is the key to the success of this instrument. Local and regional authorities know best what the priorities of their communities are. are. This is why we believe that the co-governance system must be defended and promoted. EU funds must reach people and society as a whole. Let me also remind you that the European Parliament insists that EU funds should benefit the Hungarian people and society as a whole. We all we call on the Hungarian government to give more responsibility and competences to regional authorities instead of a top-down approach. As I said in the beginning, our, goals, our goal is for the EU funds to reach Hungarian citizens, society and economy. 
we call on the Hungarian government to implement the 27 so-called super milestones, which include the 17 remedial measures under the conditionality regulation, as well as the four horizontal enabling conditions without any further delay to finally unblock almost 28 billion euro. Um, as I heard, this is more than 10,000 billion foreigns to make this happen. So we really would like that um, the Hungary is really receiving as soon as possible the funds. Our goal is not to stop the money. Our goal is that the money is spent in Hungary. So we hope that we can contribute to it. Thank you very much. And I would like to give now the floor to my colleagues. The start is Petri Savarma. He is a um, um, member of the European Parliament, very experienced since a long time uh, in the Budget Committee and um, in the Budgetary Control Committee. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very brief statement on my behalf. Um, uh, we are not inventing this stuff. I've been a member of the Budgetary Control Committee for 11 years. Uh, we, are, we are doing these missions everywhere in the European Union. Uh, we are seeing that the democratic oversight and uh, the legislation, the European law, is followed. And uh, our sole purpose is to see that the EU budget uh, is not at risk in any member state. This is not about Hungary as such. This is very important to understand. And um, uh, I will just maybe stop here. We, we are happy to take your questions. But um, these three short days is not at all uh, everything that we know about Hungary and that we have learned over the years and even over decades. I personally come from Finland. We love Hungarians. There's no problem with Hungarian people. So we are only to see that the rule of law is being respected and the European budget is protected. Thank you. Next is Lara Molters from the SND Group. Thank you. Um, from my side, too, emphasis on what we have come to do here. We have come to Hungary out of concern for our fellow European citizens, not because we are targeting Hungary in particular. We've come out of concern for them, for the next generation here, and the concern for the future of the European project. Um, why? Well, because there's a significant amount of EU funding frozen at the moment due to this government's lack of progress on rule of law issues. That is not us saying it. That is widely acknowledged and understood in Brussels, hence our visit. We indeed want to ensure that the funding that is available gets to the people of Hungary, but we cannot do that until the government here makes real progress. And for us, a government that continually uses emergency decrees uh, gives us a task in proper scrutiny to say the least. We've met with a variety of stakeholders to get a good and a sound view of the situation with regards to the rule of law and the protection of EU funds here. And as my colleague said, the picture that has emerged is one that is of great concern to us and not compatible with the impartial, um, with the impartiality of uh, uh, budgetary uh, uh, spending here. Um, we are especially concerned at the lack of information in terms of financial oversight of government spending um, and uh, the existing issues in areas related to control, audit, public procurement and conflicts of interest at the moment uh, are, are of very great concern to us. Um, moreover, real change, of course, can only be brought about with real structural and a genuine return to democracy, the rule of law, and independent and free press. And that is, of course, our hope for the future. So thank you very much. Just a short information. So because we are asked, why Hungary? We were in Spain, we were in Italy, we were in Bulgaria. So we were in different member states. So not only Hungary. This is really very important to know. This is what we are always doing. We were in Czechia. So we always do fact-finding missions. I would like to give the floor to Daniel Freund from the uh, group of the Greens. Thanks. Uh, for me personally, this is the eighth 
visit uh, to Hungary during this legislature. Uh, and I have to say every time uh, that I come here, there are new things uh, that, that you can find out. So even on the eighth visit, there are still uh, things that you find out that I think many of these are unthinkable in any other member state of, of the European Union. Uh, a rule by decree, a state of emergency for eight years now, uh, ongoing, uh, 95 budget amendments without participation of the national parliament, uh, armed inspections of a soup kitchen uh, by the tax authority, and we heard from the city of Budapest over the last few years, a 13-fold increase of their contribution to, to the national budget. So let me also repeat what my colleagues have said. We want EU funds to go to Hungary, and that as fast as possible. We want this money to be able to build schools, to put solar uh, cells on the roofs, to have um, fast internet everywhere in Hungary, and to do social assistance to the most vulnerable uh, Hungarians. So this money is crucially important to go to Hungary, but what we do not want is EU funds to just enrich the family and friends of Viktor Orban by breaking EU rules on the fight against corruption, on prevention of conflicts of interest. So for me, there are severe doubts that remain uh, that these conditions on fighting corruption, independence of the judiciary, they remain. Um, and just to say that this, we, we know that this is creating suffering here that the withholding of funds in a situation where there's 25% inflation in the country, uh, higher than in any other member state, is creating a situation. But we want the money to go as soon as the reforms that have been negotiated are implemented. Thanks. And now is the time for the questions from the press. Please state your media, your name, and the question, of course. I'm handing the micro where the question is. Thank you very much. My name is Noemi Nemati from MTVA. And first of all, may I ask you to comment on recent news uh, in which Hungarian oil company MOL has stated that they stop negotiations with the Ukrainian partner company uh, about uh, the transfer fees, oil transfer fees operating at Friendship 2 pipeline because, as they say, the CEO of the Ukrainian company said that they got permission from the European Commission and Ursula von der Leyen to stop the transfers. Um, unless Hungary yields to their demands. Would you consider it as blackmail? And also, why would be the European Commission interested in um, weakening an EU member state's economy and industry? Ich habe manchmal den Eindruck, dass manche unsere Rolle falsch verstehen. Unsere Rolle ist nicht, die wirtschaftliche Vorgänge zu begutachten oder zu kommentieren. Der Haushaltskontrollausschuss hat die Aufgabe, dar, ähm, zu überblicken, wie das europäische Budget implementiert wird, wie die europäischen Fonds implementiert werden. Wirtschaftliche Vorgänge an sich sind Fragestellungen, äh, die müssen die Mitgliedstaaten dann entsprechend mit der Kommission oder untereinander diskutieren. Was jedoch klar ist, ist, ähm, ich komme selbst aus Deutschland, wir haben in einem weitreichenden Ausmaß ähm, Abhängigkeit gehabt von Gas und wir haben im Zuge dessen, dass wir es nicht akzeptieren können, beziehungsweise es ist völlig inakzeptabel ist, dass ein Land seine eigene Souveränität nicht mehr hat, über sein eigenes Land zu bestimmen. Ich glaube, das würde Ungarn auch nicht wollen. Jedes Land hat ein Selbstbestimmungsrecht und jedes Land hat das Recht, die Integrität sozusagen seines Landes gewährleistet zu sehen. Wir haben ein großes Interesse an Frieden. Ähm, die Ukraine ist betroffen durch einen Angriffskrieg von Russland und da gibt es keine Entschuldigung dafür. Aus diesem Grund sind viele Mitgliedstaaten schwierig betroffen von den Folgen 
des Ukraine-Krieges. Und für uns ist, äh, ist es wichtig, hier auch im Europäischen Parlament, da sind viele Kolleginnen und Kollegen damit befasst, aber auch die Europäische Kommission, die zum Beispiel sehr dazu beigetragen hat, dass ähm, wir durch andere Länder zusätzlich Gas oder Öl bekommen, dass wir zusätzliche Möglichkeiten äh, bekommen, LNG zu erreichen. Viele Länder haben mittlerweile in diesem Sommer wieder deutlich gesunkene äh, Preise im, ähm, im entsprechenden Energiesektor und im Stromsektor. Und ich glaube, dass es ganz wesentlich ist, dass auch Ungarn in diesen Bereichen eng mit den Mitgliedstaaten der Europäischen Union zusammenarbeitet und nicht sozusagen immer die, Einzel, die Einzelstellung sucht. Es ist ganz wesentlich, dass die Mitgliedstaaten miteinander agieren, weil das auch zu einer Verbilligung der Strom- und der Energiepreise beiträgt, weil wir dadurch auch eine größere marktwirtschaftliche Macht miteinander haben und weil wir dazu auch eine ganze Menge für ungarische Unternehmen oder für europäische Unternehmen leisten können. Thank you very much. One more short question back to the topic. You said that you want uh, EU funds to go to Hungary, but Mr. Freund, you wrote on Twitter that no EU money to Hungary, and this was a re response to Prime Minister Viktor Orban saying that, quote, no migration, no gender, no war. Which of these topics do you think is in the way of Hungary getting further EU funds? Thank you. The money should go to Hungary as soon as the agreed conditions with the Commission are fulfilled. As we said, 27 super milestones and four horizontal enabling conditions, if they are fulfilled, the money should go to Hungary. And I hope that the Hungarian government is doing everything in their power to fulfill those conditions as fast as possible. Until that is, is not the case, then the, the money that is currently frozen should remain frozen. Thank you. Question here in front. And uh, as well, our time is kind of restricted, I ask you to say. <laughs> I see. <laughs> to be sure. <laughs> Try to be sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Rota Kani from RTL News Hungary. Thank you. What is your next step after your visit uh, back into Brussels? Are you going to give uh, advices or, or uh, suggestions to the European Commission about Hungary? And uh, what would you advise? Uh, do you advise to keep the funds suspended? Um. <laughs> Unsere Fact-Finding Missions äh, beruhen auf dem Prinzip, dass wir die Informationen, die wir von Unternehmen erhalten, von NGOs erhalten, von regionalen, lokalen Entitäten, also auch aus dem Parlament, also von unterschiedlichsten Seiten, inkludierend auch Informationen von der ungarischen Regierung. Wir geben diese alle gesammelt an die Europäische Kommission weiter. Wir geben auch unsere, sagen wir mal, kritischen Anmerkungen weiter, genauso wie die positiven. Das heißt, wenn wir etwas Positives, wir haben ein Gespräch geführt mit, Integri mit dem neuen Chef der Integritätsbehörde, das war für uns ein, ein sehr positiver Anlass, weil wir haben den Eindruck gewonnen, dass sich da tatsächlich etwas entwickelt. Wir haben auch von Seiten der NGOs über Entwicklungen gehört, dass es auch positive Entwicklungen gibt, die geben wir alle weiter. Wir geben aber auch weiter, wenn wir so wie beim Rechnungshof Fragen stellen und es waren nicht nur wir, die Fragen gestellt haben, es war zum Beispiel auch das Mitglied des Europäischen Rechnungshofes, Annemie Törtelbohm, die uns begleitet hat, die Fragen gestellt hat, ganz fachliche, sachliche Fragen und leider haben wir gar keine Antworten erhalten. Das macht uns natürlich besorgt, wenn eine Einrichtung wie der ungarische Rechnungshof solche Fragen nicht beantworten kann oder aus welchen Gründen heraus, Gründen heraus auch potenziell nicht beantworten möchte. Und das, diese Besorgnisse geben wir dann entsprechend auch weiter. Wir geben alle sozusagen Beweismittel, die wir auch erhalten haben, über diskriminatorische Maßnahmen weiter die uns ähm, von mehreren Seiten übermittelt worden sind und ähm, wo uns schon bedrückt hat, dass die Betroffenen sichtlich ängstlich waren. Also ähm, zum Teil nicht einmal offen hier ähm, ähm, eintreten wollten, weil sie zum Teil schon Besuche von entsprechenden Geheimpolizei oder von Verfassungsschutz hatten, weil sie befürchten, dass sie zwei Tage später dann eine Inspektion haben, wo ihnen wieder eine neue Sanktion auferlegt wird, die sie gar nicht verstehen können, warum sie eigentlich nicht wissen, oder neue Verpflichtungen auferlegt bekommen, oder es wieder ein neues Decree gibt, das spezifisch sie anbetrifft. Also 
das war eine Situation, die uns schon sehr bedrückt hat und die Informationen, die wir erhalten haben, waren sehr faktisch. Das heißt, wir gehen nicht nach Emotionen vor, aber wir nehmen zur Kenntnis oder nehmen auf, dass da sehr viel Angst vorhanden war und auch sehr viel Bedrücktheit vorhanden war von Seiten bestimmter einzelner Sektoren oder Menschen, die darin arbeiten. Es sind viele Tausende von ungarischen Arbeitnehmerinnen und Arbeitnehmern betroffen in diesen Bereichen, was uns dann schon auch sehr besorgt macht um die Menschen, die da um ihre Arbeitsplätze fürchten, die da um ihr, ihre Zukunft fürchten. Und wir geben diese Fakten weiter an die Europäische Kommission mit der Bitte, sie einfließen zu lassen in die offiziellen Vorgänge und in die offiziellen ähm, ähm, Vertragsverletzungsverfahren oder auch in die Vorgänge, die bezogen sind auf den sogenannten Conditionality Mechanism oder die Sperrung der Kohäsionsfonds, je nachdem, welchen Bereich es anbetrifft. So sehen wir unsere Rolle. Wir treffen nicht die Entscheidungen, weil beim Kohäsionsfonds sind es die Mitgliedstaaten, die letztendlich zu befinden haben. Das wird oftmals nicht laut gesagt, dass es nicht die Kommission ist, weil da wird so das Unbild der Kommission kreiert, die böse Kommission, die da von oben äh, bösartig die Mittel nicht weitergibt. Nein, es waren die Mitgliedstaaten, die die Gelder gesperrt haben. Es waren die Mitgliedstaaten nach einem langen, profunden, manchmal quälenden Prozess, sich dann wirklich entschieden haben, gesagt haben, so geht es nicht weiter. Und bei den anderen Fragen äh, basieren wir alle unsere Informationen, die wir weitergeben, auf Fakten. Also es wird alles auch überprüft von Seiten der Kommission, ob die Unterlagen, die wir bekommen haben, stimmen und wir erhalten auch Rückmeldungen von Seiten der Kommission, äh, wo potenziell vielleicht Informationen einseitig waren oder nicht richtig waren oder ob die Informationen gestimmt haben und tatsächlich ähm, dazu führen, dass die Vertragsverletzungsverfahren fortgeführt oder sogar ausgeweitet werden müssen. Das sind dann Informationen, die wir von der Kommission zurückbekommen. Ich darf noch mal Petri Savama geben. Yes, I would like to add briefly here that, uh, that I can tell you actually that next week, next Wednesday, there will be a joint committee meeting in, the, in Brussels, in the European Parliament, of the Budgets Committee and the Budgetary Control Committee. And jointly, we are going to meet the Budgets Commissioner, Johannes Hahn, who was here a couple of weeks ago. So we will be able to compare uh, the, the information that he uh, gathered during his talks with the government. And, and the information that we gathered on our fact-finding mission. And, and just one very brief example, you know, we will of course obviously tell, for example, that when we met the, the president of the, of the new integrity authority, that it was super interesting, very ambitious goals. Um, not, don't want to go ahead of things here, but this was one example I think that we found very positive and, 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 and we were like uh, faring him well and patting him on the shoulder and saying that, you know, best of luck to you and, and, and see you soon, etc., etc. And, and this is a guy who is uh, appointed by the government. So, again, as a proof, no matter what you hear, we are not on a mission from against any political party or for any political party. Um, and for example, the, uh, the, you know, I cannot know exactly what is the detail of every little piece of information, but I do know, based on yesterday and today, that the mayor of Budapest, what he is saying, and what Minister Navracic is saying, is 180 degrees. It's conflicting information. So this we all hear. We hear the Budapest mayor and we hear the minister. One is saying one thing, the other is saying the other thing. So this we will also pass on to, uh, to the commission uh, uh, in Brussels. And uh, as, as, uh, as was said, I think we still have some, some way to go to find out what is actually going on where. Just to complement what my colleagues have already said, uh, there will also be uh, a joint resolution in, in the European Parliament on, on the current situation of, of frozen funds in Hungary, uh, probably at the next plenary. Uh, and obviously, uh, what we have seen here in the past three days will inform 
the, the negotiations and the drafting of, of, of that resolution that will then be voted uh, in the European Parliament. So you can see not only the position of, of this delegation, uh, as we have explained here, but uh, that, that this will represent the, the, the opinion of a broad majority in the, in the European Parliament. Once again, yes, yes. Uh, excuse me. So, uh, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Daniel Bar from Megaphone, and I have got some uh, very simple questions because of the time. To uh, Mr. Daniel Freund, uh, do, do you support the weapons delivery to Ukraine? This has nothing to do with the with the topic of. Uh, it's another of this topic. Mission. Yes, I know. Uh, but yes, I, I I do. Okay, and I have got one other question. Um, if may I may I ask you, please, perhaps to remain in the premise of in the remits of, also dieser Mission. Die allgemeinen politischen Diskussionen können Sie gerne später ja, ich verstehe, was hast, was, was, Danke ja, ich verstehe, aber ich habe eine Frage, eine andere Frage. Can I speak English? Okay, so uh, if I understand uh, well from your uh, Twitter post, the Hungarians won't get EU money as long as we say no migration, no gender, no war. Das war jetzt gerade eben die Frage from und uh, der Kollege Daniel Freund hat sie gerade eben schon beantwortet. Er hat geantwortet, wenn die 27 Kriterien bzw. die 17 weiteren erfüllt sind und die vier zu den horizontalen, wenn die alle erfüllt sind und umgesetzt sind, das heißt die Bedingungen, die an die ungarische Regierung gesetzt sind, dann wird es entsprechend zu einer Deblockierung der Fonds kommen. Ich glaube, die Antwort war, hat er gegeben und ich betone, dass ich dieselbe Antwort geben würde wie er, weil äh, wir sind ja als äh, Haushaltskontrollausschuss unterwegs und äh, ich glaube, wir haben das vorhin auch im Statement sehr deutlich und klar formuliert, dass wir faktuell arbeiten um, und die Fragen, die Sie gerade gestellt haben, wurde gerade von der Kollegin schon gestellt. Ja, ich habe nur eine letzte Frage äh, auf Deutsch. Äh, ich, ist kein Problem? Ah, okay. So, äh, was ist seine Meinung über die Korruption in Brüssel? Ich habe schon auf solche Fragen geantwortet und ich habe darauf ähm, hier auch schon mal geantwortet. Diejenigen, die sich krimineller Machenschaften ähm, ob als Angehörige des Europäischen Parlaments oder als äh, diejenigen, die als vielleicht auch Beamte oder Angestellte innerhalb des Europäischen Parlaments arbeiten, werden sich vor Gerichten in Belgien verantworten müssen. Mein Wunsch wäre allerdings auch, dass dieselbe Regel für diejenigen gilt, die an Manipulationen von Ausschreibungen in Ungarn beteiligt sind, dass diese ebenfalls sich von Staatsanwälten äh, rech äh, sozusagen äh, Rechenschaft abliefern müssen und entsprechend den Gesetzen, die es in Bezug auf Manipulationen von Ausschreibungen gibt, entsprechend vor einem Gericht verantworten müssen. Das war eine der Fragen, die wir dem Rechnungshof gestellt haben. In wie vielen Fällen aus der Sicht des Rechnungshofes entsprechend Fälle an, den, an die Staatsanwaltschaft übermittelt worden sind? Leider haben wir darauf keine Antwort erhalten. Klare Antwort von uns, wer die Gesetze bricht, muss entsprechend auch vor Gericht gestellt werden und sich vor Gericht verantworten. Das ist das, worauf unser rechtsstaatliches System beruht. Dankeschön. Thank you for the opportunity. I am Yudi Czerniaski from the Club Radio. I would like to ask first of all that have you met everybody who planned to meet, wanted to meet? And maybe the second, we, we, we heard a lot of times from the government that the money is coming very soon in a month, in two months, and et cetera. So after meeting with the government, what do you think, what your assumptions about the money is coming to Hungary? Well, the answer can I relatively leicht insofern geben, when if the 17 remedial measures are met, if the 27 super milestones are met, 
and in, um, as a surplus, if the four horizontal uh, points are met, then uh, if they are really implemented, credibly implemented, and if they are sustainably implemented, then the money uh, should go to Hungary. This is why we uh, really call on uh, the uh, Hungarian government, please um, uh, implement the measures as soon as possible, as quick as possible, because we would like to reach European funds to the whole of the population and the Hungarian society. This is our wish. And secondly, whom have we met? Um, the second question I give to Lara. Um, we had a very good talk with Minister Navratic. He took really uh, a lot of times, even if we don't have the same opinion on all, all the questions. So there were political differences, but... The question was if there was... Any yes, yes, I, I, I continue. <laughs> Secondly, uh, we um, uh, met um, uh, the State Secretary of the Justice Ministry. Um, the Minister of Justice was not available for us. Um, so not everybody was available for us, but um, to be clear, this is normal in other member states, they are not available either. But we were a little bit astonished by the Justice Ministry. The State Secretary really took a lot of time. That was fine, even if there are politically different opinions on certain issues. Uh, this is uh, normal. But um, I think that uh, the conditionality mechanism and the underlying rule of law issues are of major importance, so that we thought that this could be interesting for the Justice Minister to talk to the European Parliament and to explain perhaps certain uh, issues from, their, uh, from her point of view. But this was not the case. Um, you have to ask the Minister why uh, she was not available. I don't want to criticize this, but this was not the case. Yes, just from, from my side as well, that Minister Judith Varga was not available to meet with us. We have not, I think, uh, received uh, further information as to why this was the case. But of course, I echo the sentiment that this was to us surprising since we are talking about billions of euros that we would like to see go to Hungarians um, for some very important projects that can improve the quality of life. So we do think that in, in such a case that there is very good reason to meet and, and we were rather rather surprised by this. We hope uh, that we should not read into this, uh, but, but of course it, uh, it was a question mark. Secondly, one uh, observation from our meetings here, um, we heard things that were contradictory between some of the stakeholders that we met, um, but another contradiction that I did want to point out was the contrast between the availability uh, and the formality and the egar we were received with um, of certain ministries um, and the atmosphere created here in terms of media attention, which from the from the beginning was was rather hostile. And this contrast to us, uh, I think, has not been beneficial to our work um, and has made the visit more tense than it ought to be because we have come here in a spirit of openness and cooperation. Uh, I would also like to add to your question about you asked when <laughs> and uh, this is uh, for the commission to assess um, but I can tell you that th 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 there are not like different opinions or it's not an opinion uh, it, it's not about opinions there are not dif different views or different opinions between the commission and the parliament I will not say anything on behalf of the Commission, but I can say on, on the behalf of us and Parliament and uh, with my uh, contacts with, uh, with the Commission, that we, uh, we both want exactly the one and only and the same thing. And this has been already repeated several times here. Um, put an end to breaches of the rule of law. And this is what I was referring to in my opening statement, that it, this is not something that is our invention, that it's, it's, it's not invention of, of any political party represented in the European Parliament. It's not the invention of the European Parliament. It's not a conspiracy. 
It is uh, fact-finding by all relevant European institutions. And we have to remember that 25 of the 27 member states agreed and decided to freeze uh, this awful amount of funds from Hungary. So this is where we are with it. And, and the only answer to your question is, again, repeating, 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 when the Commission assists that everything is in place. And here, by the way, it's very important that, that, um, that I think the common understanding is that everything has to be fulfilled. Not partially, not um, 24 or 17 or something, and then there will be a proportionate amount of money released. No, it's like in all negotiations. Nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. And, but this, of course, is between the Hungarian government and the European Commission. As we are over our scheduled time, I'm asking now the members if we have uh, time for one or more questions. One more, so somebody who, yes. <laughs> Yeah, hello. Uh, sorry. Uh, my name is Balázs Márton from Telex. I have uh, two very short questions. Uh, one of them is that uh, were there any attempts from either governing party uh, to uh, participate in uh, the delegation uh, from any MEPs? And uh, the second question is about the uh, Hungarian Parliamentary Commissions. If I understood it correctly, you met the uh, presidents of the commissions, uh, but not the member states, and there were some conflicting information about whether you intended to meet them or not. Um, did you? <laughs> okay, thank you. Knapp und bündig erklärt. Wir haben die Ausschüsse und ihre Mitglieder, also die Vorsitzenden und ihre Mitglieder ähm, ähm, eingeladen oder gern sprechen wollen und haben um ein Gespräch gebeten. Wir haben uns nicht beschränkt auf die Vorsitzenden ähm, und ähm, wir haben dann letztendlich vier Vorsitzende getroffen, aber von unserer Seite besteht immer eine sehr große Offenheit, auch ähm, eben ganz normale Parlamentarier zu treffen und nicht nur die Vorsitzenden weil wir selbst ganzen uns als normale Parlamentarier empfinden und deshalb überlassen wir dies dann letztendlich der Entscheidung der entsprechenden äh, parlamentarischen Vertretungen bzw. ihrer Ausschüsse, ähm, wie viele Mitglieder mit uns sprechen wollen oder nicht. Das äh, obliegt dann dem ungarischen Parlament und nicht uns. Aber unsere Einladung ging an ähm, beide. Ähm, was war die erste Frage nochmal? I forgot it. Aber ob Fidesz mitfahren wollte? Ähm, nein, wir haben im Haushaltskontrollausschuss kein Mitglied von Fidesz und aus diesem Grund äh, war da auch äh, die Frage gar nicht offen. Äh, wir hatten ein Hearing, bei dem es zu einer etwas schwierigen Begegnung gekommen ist, weil jemand, der von äh, Fidesz gesandt worden war, ähm, dann in den Saal kam und ähm, apodiktisch das Wort verlangte, ähm, da ich als Ausschussvorsitzende aber mich gebunden fühle an äh, die Entscheidungen, die die Koordinatoren treffen und die Gäste, die eingeladen waren und sich frühzeitig angemeldet hatten, ähm, hatte ich ihm angeboten, dass sie sich gern hier melden können, ist aber nicht passiert. Dafür gab es aber eine breite Meldung nach draußen, dass er nicht hat reden dürfen im Europäischen Parlament. Im Europäischen Parlament dürfen viele sprechen, wenn sie sich frühzeitig entsprechend äh, melden und wir natürlich die Zeit entsprechend einteilen können. Wenn allerdings die Meldungen zu spät kommen, dass es dann zu Ungunsten der anderen bereits seit langem eingeplanten Personen oder Unternehmen oder NGOs geht, dann akzeptieren wir das nicht mehr. Aber mit solchen Kleinigkeiten kommt man zurecht. Und äh, wir hatten hier eigentlich eine sehr harmonische Delegation, die ähm, auch in vielen, vielen Bereichen gemeinsam Positionen parteiübergreifend ergriffen hat, weil uns als Kontkomitee, als Haushaltskontrollausschuss ist es sehr wichtig, 
klarzumachen, dass das hier keine parteipolitische Angelegenheit ist, sondern dass da das Europäische Parlament, genauso wie es die 25 Mitgliedstaaten getan haben, eine einheitliche Auffassung hat zur Einhaltung von rechtsstaatlichen Standards, zur Einhaltung auch der Regeln eines ähm, freien europäischen Binnenmarktes und äh, in den grundlegenden Fragen, die den Konditionalitätsmechanismus oder die Implementierung der europäischen äh, finanziellen Mittel anbetrifft. Well, I, I do believe that it's important to, to underline here, since there have been some media reports pointing to the, to the delegation and how it is consisted. That, uh, that it's, um, uh, that, that, uh, that it's, it's, it's maybe biased or something like this, but please note that uh, actually the Hungarian government is represented if we look at the party uh, affiliation representation in the European Parliament. KNDP, the party of Minister Navracic, is in the same political party in the European Parliament as our chair, Monika Holmeyer, and as myself. We are all in EPP in the European Parliament. So, actually, uh, the Hungarian government, through representation in the European Parliament, is represented in this delegation. Auch einmal um die Zusammensetzung einer solchen Delegation vielleicht kurz zu erklären, um, dass wir jetzt hier als S und D EVP und Grüne sitzen, hat nichts damit zu tun, dass nicht jeder mitfahren darf. Das heißt, die Renew-Gruppe war bis gestern noch dabei, aber die Kollegin musste heute aufbrechen. ECA, ID als auch The Left hätten die Möglichkeit gehabt zu partizipieren. Das ist deren eigene Entscheidung. Wenn Sie an der Delegation nicht teilnehmen, ist es Ihre Entscheidung, es ist nicht unsere. Es ist also, die Gruppierungen sind zugelassen und haben die Möglichkeit zu partizipieren an einer Delegation. Und mit this we conclude our press conference. Thank you for coming.